You're watching Greater Brockton, Special Candidates Edition. Instead of having all the nonprofits we help promote the events, we are going to help promote all the candidates or let them actually promote themselves. I have with me here in studio Julio Pomar. Welcome, Julio. Thank nice you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Mark. Nice um, to see, you. see the red signs floating up, popping up around the city. Um, red gets your attention, that's for sure. Right? Sure does. There's, uh, few people, some people are red, white, and blue. Some people are the Brockton colors. Um, let me ask you. Why are you running for mayor? What prompted you to get in this, this race? I actually started looking at the people who were running for mayor, who I thought I could help by backing them. And nothing against any one of them, but I thought I could do a better job. Mm -hmm. I didn't think they had the, the right qualifications. I didn't think that the people who I looked at really had the right life experiences that I would hope to have, uh, what I would want a mayor to have. Now, I look at what I have, what I, what I could bring, possibly bring to the table, and I, I came to the realization that, you know, I think I could do a very, far better job than they can, certainly on qualifications, certainly based on my life experience. And those are the things I'm, I'm, I'm queuing on, is the things that I, I know I could be a better mayor in that sense. I've been exposed to more, and I've had to deal with more things in my 52 years of life. So let's talk the life experience. Sure. Okay. What are they? I know you're an EMT. Is it EMT? Am I using the right term? I'm a paramedic. Paramedic. Okay. I know it gets a little complex. Right. A layperson like me wouldn't know. I, I know... I have the utmost respect for, for any paramedics or ENTs because when my dad had some tough times a couple of years ago, uh, saved his life, basically, over in Easton. He, he lives Good. over in Easton. But um, when you go for medical training, it's mm -hmm. pretty stringent training. It's oh, not, absolutely. It's, you don't just uh, go and pass this little written test and you're all set. You, right. It's practical. There's all sorts of stuff. Talk about that a little bit. Oh, okay. Well, when, when I teach, I, and I, I've taught some kids and I've taught courses, and it's like when you're in high school or when you're in college, you, you find yourself taking and preparing for an exam. You find yourself, I'm going to pass this exam. I want to do it. So I, and then once you pass the exam, so okay, now on to the next exam. As a paramedic and as an EMT, you're not just learning to pass exam, you're learning to save someone's life. Mm -hmm. And as a firefighter, you train because you want to save your own life as well, but as an EMT and as a paramedic, you want to train to save someone's life. And there is no bigger calling for that. Same as like doctors are, are, are in the medical field for many, many years before they are cut loose, because they're the same thing. They're not just passing to, to reach a certain, to, to, to pass a test or to, to reach a certain point. They, they're, they're, they're studying and they're learning to save someone's life, which is what paramedics and EMTs do. So it is very stringent. Um, I became an EMT in, uh, well, I'm sorry, but my very first medical training, I uh, was a Navy hospital corpsman I, right after high school. Uh, when I got out of the Navy, I continued my medical field. I became an EMT. Um, shortly thereafter, I, uh, I became a, a firefighter. I was hired on the Bourne Fire Department down the Cape in Bourne, and they sent me to uh, paramedic school. I became a paramedic in 1987. I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. I became an EMT in 1987, a civilian EMT. I became a paramedic in 1994. Um, I worked for the Bourne Fire Department for about 21 years. Uh, retired, uh, we reached the rank of a lieutenant. So my, and as a firefighter, I was a firefighter and a paramedic. So there may be a medical call coming in, so I might be in the ambulance, or the next call could be a fire call, I might be in a fire, in a fire truck. Mm -hmm. So I did both. I'm very, very, very uh, comfortable uh, as a firefighter. I was very comfortable as a paramedic. And along with that, part of my life experiences, I was also involved in the union. I was involved in the fire union, Local 1717. I was a shop steward. I got a nice taste for how unions are, great unions are great. And um, if in a perfect world, maybe we wouldn't need them, but we don't have a perfect world. So you got to stand up for workers' rights. You got to make sure that, you know, and you, you want safety. All these things are brought by by the unions over the years that have, have um, increased the safety of workers and the, certainly the wages and, and things that uh, have made workers a lot uh, better places to work. Now, um, being involved in a fire union, I got to see a lot of things as far as uh, I was exposed to uh, negotiating contracts, uh, advisory councils, safety issues, uh, even payroll. So I think things like that, even though I'm not per se I've never run for public office, which I haven't run for public office. Certainly the things I've done on the fire department side, the things I've done in my own life experiences, has kind of gone parallel to what somebody would have done if they run for office. And I think that uh, that prepares me for uh, to, to run for mayor. Well, most people that run for public office come from the private sector or True. even the public sector ahead of time. So let me ask you a question. You would be on the other side of the table as the mayor. You right. would be negotiating, I don't want to use the word against, but on behalf of the city, 
maybe against some of the stuff that the union wants, like more money or better health insurance or something like that. How would you see yourself in that role? You're the CEO of the city, you have a director of personnel, you have a CFO, you have people that are part of the negotiating team. Mm -hmm. How would you take off one hat, put on the other hat? Well, as a mayor, I did, first off, I'd, I'd always, I'd always uh, negotiate in good faith. And I would tell any union, whether it was fire department union, police department, uh, transportation, whatever the union is, is listen, we're gonna make things, we're gonna compromise. You're not gonna get everything you want, I'm not gonna get everything I want, but we're gonna be able to walk away from it with our heads held high doing, we did the best we could, and we have some things, maybe some things we compromised on, but I, that's what I would tell them. Now, let's say the, well, lack of a better term, simply because I am a, a firefighter, let's say the fire department wanted a huge raise. And I wouldn't tell me, listen guys, maybe I can't get you the huge rage, but how about if I give you a little bit of what you want and maybe we put some of that towards maybe a living, living conditions. You've got three fire stations right here in the city of Rockton that were designed when horses were still being used. Mm -hmm. Those buildings are antiquated to say the least. And in some cases, they may even, you know, they may even be bordered on being not safe. So when I tell the guys, all right, let's give you half of what you want and put some of that extra money towards, your le towards getting you a newer fire station, possibly getting you newer equipment. Mm -hmm. Things that's gonna make you safe. Because let's face it, if, I have got a, if you get a huge raise, but then I have to raise the property taxes so much more because of that huge raise, what have you really gained? You haven't gained anything. Because mm -hmm. now you're paying more as much as you're putting out. So it doesn't make any sense to me. So what are you hearing out there for issues? You had to get your signatures to be on the ballot. Um, you're going out knocking on doors, I'm assuming, and, yep. and meeting, meeting people you know, to place the signs and stuff like that. What issues are you hearing about? Um, and, and the other question I'll, I'll follow with that, but I'll, I'll give you a preview of it, is I want you to tell me why you, you said you can do better than the other candidates that are running. I want to hear why you think you can do better than the guy that has the job. So okay. start with the issues. Well, so one of the big issues is people talking about the homeless population here in Brockton. And they see homeless and uh, people who are, um, who, who are addicts, they see them as the same people. And that's not always true. Not every homeless person is an addict, certainly not every ad addict is a homeless person. There's two separate um, demographics of people. Now the homeless people, I hate to say that because homeless for many different reasons. Some of them have mental issues, some of them have, you know, they're just financial issues, some of them have um, addiction issues. What I would like to do is get them the support they need to get them out of. Nobody wants to be homeless. So whether it's a point of being able to provide uh, low rent housing or no rent housing so we can get them on their feet, get them into a resource building where they can get, uh, where they have access to using computers to find a job, places to, places to live, um, med uh, simple medical care. Instead of going to the hospitals and really tying up the resources of the hospitals because they just there's so many of them, why don't we try to find our way of bringing the medi basic medical needs back to them? An ambulance is just gonna take somebody to the hospital. That's what they're there for. They're not there to treat somebody on scene. But let's have, there are, uh, there are programs out there called community paramedicine where a paramedic will go out to, the, out to the street and actually treat people who are there at the basic level and keep them from going into the hospitals mm -hmm. and, and tying up the hospitals. And that, that, that program is, is out there and that's maybe something we need to look at here in the city of Brockton. Um, homeless is a really huge part. A lot of people are talking about the homeless. Just recently, uh, the other day, they were cleared out behind the uh, homeless people were cleared out behind the George School. Mm -hmm. My question is, well, where do they go? What did you do with them? Did you, you know, Mr. Mayor, you were there. Did you put them on a bus and send them to? Did you send them to West Bridgewater? Did you send them someplace else? What did you do with them? You got to take care of the problem. You don't just hide them. You're not moving from one area to another. This beautiful park we have right in the city of right in the city of Brockton. Love that park. When I was a kid, I used to play leaves there. Mm -hmm. But it's fenced off because supposedly it's going to be renovated. I haven't seen any renovations. But all those people who were there now, now they're in front, and you can see them. They're more visual now than they were before. Let's open up that park so that everybody can use it. Let's fix the problem, not move the problem. Okay, so. I got the five minute queue. I want to make sure I leave about two minutes left for you at the end so you can also let people know how to contact you, phone number, website, things okay. like that. But tell me, um, I, I want to touch on desal a little bit. What do you think of the, the mayor's proposal to buy the desal plant as the secondary water source instead of renting it? Are you for it or against it? Right now, I think any expenditure that has to be, right now, just without really delving into it, I'd say that I'm against it right now. 
Okay. I, I think that US, we do need to find another water source, but I think I, some of the money that be used for buying a desal plant, I'd rather see that being used to improve the infrastructure of the water system in the city so we don't have a catastrophic loss that we did a couple of years ago. MWRA, is that a solution? Mm -hmm. That seems to be, from what I've seen, the numbers I've seen, it's extremely uh, expensive solution. And I haven't seen everything yet because they weren't able to propose what if we did the, uh, if we were able to put a, a branch line into the Stoughton line. That could be a huge number. That could be a big way, that could be for it against it. Um, you gotta see all the numbers first. Okay. I know a lot of people who have who do have MWRA and they're not all happy about it. So there's got to be something. Have we found all? The, have we found all the uh, all the um, have we found all the right things to do yet? Or have we found all the all the options? I don't think we have. Okay, let's so find out. Three minutes left. I'm going to give you two of those three or two and a half. Okay. Why are you better than the current mayor? What would you bring to the table differently? And uh, talk to the voters, forget sure. about me, and tell them how to get in touch with you and uh, for, ask for the support. Great. Um, as far as the mayor goes right now, whether you like him or dislike him, however you feel, I think if you have your eyes open, you see somebody who has little integrity. I think I bring a lot of integrity into the, sir, into the, the office. As a mayor, my, own, my integrity, my professional integrity will always be for the city. It will never be something that will come to question. You won't see my name in newspapers, excuse me. You won't see my name in newspapers or other things in a negative way. I will do, I'll do my best to make sure that I stay on the right side of the law and the people who work with me will stay on the right side of the law and there's no suspicions either way, right or wrong. As far as you want to reach out to me, my name is Julio C. Pomar. My, uh, you can get me on Facebook. I have an elect Julio C. Pomar committee on Facebook. And you can see me, I'm walking around the streets. I work, I walk through the streets of Brockton all the time. You see me, come out and say hi. You can see my signs. I'm easily accessible. Phone number for anyone who wants to call you? I, excuse me, one second. I got to check out that phone number. Oh, okay. I have to look. Because we want to put it up for you on the sure. screen. Sure, let me put the number, number up there. Um, um, well, well, you can give yeah, it to us please, and we'll put I, it up. I don't want to. Because you don't call yourself. No, I don't call okay. myself. Believe Everybody it or not. else calls you. Everybody else um, does. Anything else you want to add? I think I got a, a, a few, um, uh, I have a minute, so you get 30 seconds of that. Okay. Minute. Anything else you want to add? Uh, you, people know my name is Julio, so that's not really a white name. Actually, I was born in Peru in South America. I am a Latino American. I am Peruvian by birth and American by choice. To my people who are out there who speak Spanish, yo me llamo Julio César Palmar, yo quiero ser la cara de acá de Brockton. Yo voy a trabajar duro para toda la gente que me votan para mí, para los hispanos y toda la gente que vive acá en Brockton. No te olviden que en noviembre 7 es el elección, elección de en septiembre también, septiembre 19 es para lo que es el primary. So, ojalá me voten para mí y vamos a, yo voy a ser el mejor alcalde de todo, que pueden tener aquí en Ciudad. Thank you, Julio. Thank We're you going to wrap much. up this part of the show and we'll hopefully have candidates on after the preliminary and get the top two together. All right, for that'd debate. be great. Would you do that? I said I would. Okay, thank you. I got you on the, on the record. Um, you're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more candidates, but most importantly, educate yourself about all the candidates for mayor, council at large, council, school committee, but most of all, vote. Thank you for joining us.